Hello, BookTube. I've got a little mail haul for you uh, today and a little bit of an unusual uh, location, <laughs> a little bit of unusual acoustics, and it's not much of a mail haul, uh, but it is one periodical and a couple of packages from publishers, and the periodical is the Vineyard Gazette. This is a, an old-style broadsheet newspaper uh, that's put out regularly on the island of Martha's Vineyard off the coast of Massachusetts, uh, where I have been many, many times. I know the Vineyard very, very well, or did once upon a time. Uh, including knowing the Gazette. I knew the Gazette really well, and I knew its editor back then and his dog. Uh, and now I am a regular book reviewer for the Vineyard Gazette. Uh, so one of the first things I do when you get the Vineyard Gazette, I don't imagine many of you do, I'd be curious to know if any of you actually get the Gazette. Uh, when you get the Vineyard Gazette, you turn immediately to the very back page, the Vineyard Gardener, the birds, all outdoors, that sort of thing. Uh, but then if you're a discriminating Vineyard reader, you will go right away to the middle section, to see if there is a review by Steve. Is there a review by Steve in this issue? Oh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. The Vineyard Bookshelf, that's the name of, uh, of the steady reviews here. And this is the review of uh, a book that we saw on this channel, The Brownsville, Texas Incident, uh, by William Baker, Lieutenant Colonel William Baker. Uh, that I, I called it on this channel and uh, I, I read it and loved it and reviewed it and ha it has received, that review has received a huge response, a very gratifying response. It's really, really good uh, to get that kind of, to, to strike that kind of tone with readers is really, really good, really gratifying. Uh, and I just, I just uh, filed another review uh, for the Gazette, so I'm, I'm on a roll. <laughs> uh, then we've got two, two packages here, two of these white packages here, so they're both from Public <laughs> Uh, and we'll just <laughs> we'll just see what we have here. Uh, <laughs> mean, you want this? <laughs> uh, Frida is a little bit antsy because <laughs> she doesn't like change any more than any sane person does. Uh, let's see what we have here. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, how, how, how wonderful. <laughs> okay, this doesn't come out until March. This is destined for someone else. Alex and a view from a bar will be getting this book in the mail. Uh, we'll see what he can do with it. Uh, it certainly isn't destined for me. This is by Glenn Frankel, and it is called Shooting Midnight Cowboy, Art, Sex, Loneliness, Liberation, and the Making of a Dark Classic. Uh, it, it, it's... Uh, is something unique in the history of cinema. The story of a young Texan who moves to New York City to become a hustler and the relationship he forms with a small time grifter. It is the only film with an X rating ever to win Best Picture at the Academy Awards. In this book, Pulitzer Prize winning writer Glenn Frankel gives this true classic the new Holly of the New Hollywood era the authentic the authoritative history that it deserves. And this comes out in mid March. Uh, the book is much more than a simple history of the making of Schlesinger's landmark film. Shooting Midnight Cowboy is also a fascinating group portrait of the men and women who came together to create the film. Chief among them, Lee, James Leo Hurley, a talented young novelist who penned the gritty book on which the movie is based, and Schlesinger, the director who made his name as part of the British New Wave, and then crossed the Atlantic to try to make his mark on the American cinema. Along the way, Frankel also tells the story of the film's two iconic leads, Dustin Hoffman, just off his breakthrough success with The Graduate, and John Voight, a fresh-faced and rather unknown at the time of shooting. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to shock absolutely none of you when I, re when I reveal that I think Midnight Cowboy is a gigantic steaming piece of poop. So I am clearly not the person to review this book since I, all I would be doing is arguing with the author who clearly venerates it uh, all throughout. So this should go to a cinematiste, <laughs> a, a, a fan of such things. So I will find such a person and I will put it in the mail to them. Because one of my, uh, one of my uh, New Year's resolutions, I don't make New Year's resolutions, but one of my New Year's resolutions for 2021 is to get over this ridiculous hang up about never going to the post office. I, I stopped when it was dangerous. It is now under control. So I need to start going back to the post office. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, so what have we got here? What's this next one? Lovely thing. Uh, this comes out in early February. So neither one of these is, is on my radar at all, no matter what their subject is. This is by Robbie Arnott, and it is The Rain Heron. Uh, uh, the author is an award-winning Australian author. 
his second novel and the first to be published in the United States, this gripping tale of myth, environment, adventure, and an unlikely friendship introduces an exciting new voice in international literature in the growing genre of climate fiction. Uh, Ren lives alone on the remote frontier of a country devastated by a coup d'etat. High on the forested slopes, she survives by hunting, farming, trading, and forgetting the contours of what was once a normal life. But her quiet stability is disrupted when an army unit, led by a young female soldier, comes to the mountains on government orders to search for a legendary creature called the Rain Heron, a mythical, dangerous, form-shifting bird with the ability to change the weather. Ren insists that the bird is simply a story, yet the soldier will not be deterred, forcing them both into a grueling quest. Okay, that sounds really interesting. <laughs> that sounds really, really interesting. Uh, I won't be getting to it um, this year, but uh, I will definitely be getting to it next year. <laughs> so, so there you go. We have the Vineyard Gazette featuring yours truly, and we have two two works of uh, two new books for twenty twenty one: fiction and in and nonfiction. Uh, so that was a little a little brief Tuesday mail haul for you. <laughs> a little bit of. A little bit of chaos. I'm going to try. I ended my last video by by uh, accidentally telling Frida on camera to calm down. Uh, you're wandering all around, aren't you? You are. You're wandering all around. <laughs> I'll, I'll, anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, but I'll be back. Thank you, Booktube.